Let's say this patient has low back and gluteal pain. Included in my examination would be a diagnosis of the sacroiliac joint. He's more restricted on the right side. The right ASIS is inferior. The right PSIS is superior. So that gives us a right anterior rotation. Avery, if I were to treat this with muscle energy technique, which muscle group would I have him activate once I take him to the restrictive barrier? The hamstrings, which will rotate the anomena into correct position due to the attachment at the pelvis. Correct. And Mia, how many times would I repeat the technique? Until you achieve maximal therapeutic effect, usually three to five times. Right, exactly. Good job, both of you. All right, I'll do that technique so you can see what it looks like, and then we'll recheck the results. Push your leg into me. Relax. Push again. And relax. And again. And relax. The landmarks are more symmetrical and the movement is more free. Okay, so then once we've treated the somatic dysfunctions in the regions that could obstruct the longitudinal flow of the lymphatics, we can proceed to the lymphatic pump. So you would come to the head of the table. You place the volar aspect of your wrists just inferior to the patient's clavicle. And for the patient's comfort, you may wish to turn your fingers in and then you're going to spring longitudinally down the body at a frequency of about two pumps per second. Fred, what would be some clinical indications to do this? So certain instances of edema, infections of the upper and or lower respiratory tract, and if the patient is bedridden, barring any contraindications. And what about some contraindications? So certain blood clots, acute fractures, and hematologic processes, and uh, if the patient is declining. Exactly. What we're going to demonstrate is a muscle energy technique to correct a radial head dysfunction. In circumstance like this, the patient would have fallen with his arm outstretched like this, and is unable then to fully turn his palm up into a position we call supination. So go right ahead and start the technique. Okay, turn your palm facing the ground gently against my force. Lleva su palma hacia abajo contra mi fuerza. Relax. Relájase. I'm going to stretch you a little bit more. Te estrio un poco más. Turn your palm facing the ground again. Lleve su palma hacia abajo otra vez. Relax. Relájase. This procedure would be repeated three to five times until the full range of motion has been restored in the forearm. Then the patient, you know, then you can check both sides to make sure that there's equal supination. Okay, so we're going to do one final stretch. Un estrio final. And we're just going to recess for motion on both sides. So, evaluar el movimiento de nuevo. And if you notice, we've had her do it both English and Spanish because we see a significant number of Latino patients. All right, so what's the first step? So the first step would be diagnosis. All right, so go ahead and diagnose her cervical spine and see if you can find a dysfunction. Okay. All right, there's a flexion and side bent left dysfunction in the OA. 
Okay, and what do you want to treat it with? Um, I'd like to do some high velocity lampitude. All right, so is that a direct or indirect technique? That is a direct technique. So you are going to take it directly to the? Restrictive barrier. All right, go ahead. Do my dominant hand and isolate the OA. Okay. Place my other hand under the chin, and then do I add rotation? You do. Okay. So you localize to the restrictive barriers. Have her take a nice deep breath in. Deep breath. Blow it out. And a little One more. Fast. Yep. And then what do you do when you're done? And then I have to recheck. And what are you rechecking for? For any symmetry and make sure that it's returned. And it has.